Okay. All right. Hey there, everyone. How are we doing today? It's me, Bryce. Welcome to my video on Sabine, the Sabine Pass battlefield, which was fought on September 8th of 1864. Yes, sir. But uh, today, um, so if you don't know Sabine Pass, it was a battle that was fought during the Civil War in on September eighth of eighteen sixty four. Uh, it was at this point that during the war that the Confederacy was losing ground. Uh, the Army of North of North Virginia under Robert E. Lee was losing ground, losing Virginia under being being beaten back by the Federals, and uh, the Army of Tennessee or the Army of the, of Tennessee yes, uh, was being uh, thwarted under General Braxton Bragg uh, was being uh, thwarted by federal forces in Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, and uh, the Trans Mississippi, which was. Texas, uh, oh, parts of Louisiana, Oklahoma, Arkansas, really didn't see much action at this point. There were a few incursions of Texas there by federal forces, but really they weren't. Uh, they were always being beaten back. Confederate troops always thwarted their invasions, but uh, it was all. But um, but a Sabine Pass. <clears throat> Uh, occurred on uh, September the 8th, 1864. Sorry if I keep repeating myself. But uh, as you can see, over there is where federal gunboats uh, came down. Uh, down here. Now, there used to be a fort uh, where the Confederates were, somewhere down there and such. However, uh, the fort no longer exists because sadly it was destroyed by multiple hurricanes and uh, storms. So sadly it doesn't exist anymore. But there was a force, an invading force from New Orleans of about 5,000 federal soldiers including 18 gunboats. Their plan was to make a landing into Texas, into Texas uh, set up a base and funnel more troops. And then make a large-scale invasion of the north of, of the state. Well, that would have happened if it wasn't for uh, a small band of Confederates, about uh, 60 in total, named the Davis Guards, which belonged to Battery F of the First Texas Artillery. And uh, these 60 men thwarted an invasion force of 5,000. Now the battle. It started along down over there when the Federals coming down the waterways over here <clears throat> and uh, they saw the fort. Well, they believed that uh, there were there were some rebels in there, and of course there were. Uh, so they so the commander ordered a bombardment of the uh, fort. Well. He believed that there was no resistance because they've been firing at the fort for five hours and no one has had fired back at them. Little did they know that uh, the bombardment, during the bombardment, the Confederates were actually hiding under uh, bunkers and uh, no one was killed and wounded during the bombardment. And so as the ships are sailing past the, uh, past the fort, the Confederates under Richard, Dow Richard Dowling uh, got back on their cannons about a few parrot guns and a few 12 pound Napoleons fired at the federal fleet completely surprising them it was such a it, uh, the federals were so shocked that there were rebels that they that there was little to no control and two confederate ships uh, who were they were both uh former merchant ships were converted into cotton class and the, there were some true confederates that were firing at the federals uh, here and there you can see right here is that uh, at some point during the fight I'll let you uh, read it if you wish as I talk uh, says right here that the men were all Irish it was an all Irish unit 
including they were supported by some, some sharpshooters and men from the 2nd Texas Cavalry and Spice Infantry Battalion. Uh, during the fight, um, they captured two ships, uh, the USS Morning Light and the USS Velocity, including their crews. By the time that the fighting was over with, about uh, 215 Union sailors and, and soldiers were captured with about uh, 20, 24 Union soldiers killed. And including seven of those uh, captured were African Americans. Uh, this battle was such a resounding victory for the Confederates that it increased Confederate morale all over the, uh, the country. And it, and it was described by many Federals to be one of the worst defeats of the whole war as such one of the most embarrassing defeats. 60 men beating a force of 5,000 invading troops and 18 gunboats. But, uh... Really, this battle, it, even though it was a resounding Confederate victory, it did not change the South's uh, war effort. The South was still going to lose the war, no matter what. But, uh, the prison... But... Uh, skipping that, the prisoners that they that they captured, they didn't know what to do with them. So what they did is that they, the infantry, the sharpshooters, and some of the cavalrymen, escorted them back to Houston and where they were put into a prison. But uh, as you can see, as I'm walking right here, this is a model of the uh, fort. You see right here, that's this is where the federal gunboats would have been. You can see the USS Satchum, the USS Arizona, and the USS Clifton. <clears throat> the rebels suffered completely no losses. No one was killed, no one was wounded. But uh, as we're walking down here, this is a uh, monument to the casualties. And you can see uh, the people that were killed, wounded, and missing. So you see the USS Clifton, 75th New York, the 12th Maine, you can see it, 75th New York, and USS Satchel, 3rd Massachusetts, the 161st New York, and some more men who were uh, missing. Of course, uh, this is, says there are 25 African Americans, but their names are not recorded. Uh, we come up here. Now, this monument says right here, if you can, uh, so right here is uh, the statue to the men of the of Battery F, of the Jeff Davis Guards. And on the other side, are the men who fought. Over here, one sec. Uh, the fort that was here was Fort Griffin. If uh, you can read it, but uh, it says right here that Dowling uh, was a former businessman and uh, formed the unit uh, Battery F.
Now when we come down here, you can see, see, you can see the beautiful view of the river that you've seen. Of course, the rest of the landscape, besides the ugly clouds. What's interesting is that this place was actually, uh, during the Second World War, was used to repel uh, German U-boats. And there were a few U-boat raids around the area, but uh, they were very minor. They didn't do that much damage. And these little uh, little humps on the ground, well, they were uh, they're actually uh, little bases or uh, little uh, ammo uh, depots and such during the, during the Second World War. Now, of course, it's a park. Usually it would be packing, but well, it's not packing because of COVID, so. But uh, as we come down here, you can see this little pillar and it has a lot more information about Sabine Pass and uh, other, other things. But uh, if you like more of this content, uh, just uh, post, put it down in the comment section. Just let me know if you want to see more battlefield parks and hear more information. <coughs> and uh, soon there will be another video in about another month. We'll have a Civil War reenactment. I'm sure you guys will, would love that to see that video. Okay, so we come over here. And we'll start from the first thing. Where it has a coastal strategy for the Civil War during the time. Y'all can read it. Then we come over here. I will be walking to all of them, so uh, y'all can pause the video and watch. Or just uh, read. And we come over here. And down here. Yeah, uh, so the Confederates had about uh, 22, 24 pound guns, two brass howitzers, four heavy guns, and uh, 30, 32 pound cannons that were buried and they had to repair them and post, place them for the defense. You know, the fort was built by 500 enslaved African Americans. And of course, the fight. The battle lasted, as it says on the bottom, lasted for two hours. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, this battle actually produced some of the most rare artifacts of the war, which you can see right here. And uh, basically these were the only medals that were uh, ever in, uh, produced by any Confederate force. Up here you can see Gen uh, Colonel Dowling. But um, basically, as it says right here, um, after the battle, the people of Houston, Texas, uh, raised funds to make med 60 medals for the guards. And these are the most rarest of artifacts. So what they did is that they put in DG for the unit's insignia, the Davis Guards. It says right here, uh, Sabine Pass, September 8th, 1863. Sorry if I said 1864 the first time. And of course, it has a little bit of history of the lighthouse. I forgot to say, um, there was, as it says right here, there was an ambush scouting party on April 16th, but this, but uh, that was one of the many little raids that the Union did during the, the war, since they were so, since they were never even able to invade the state, all they really controlled was bits of uh, the state Galveston, I'm sorry, not Galveston, Mustang Island, uh, parts of Brownsville, parts of St. Pottery, and that's about it. Any other time that the Federals even tried to come, they were uh, repulsed by the Confederates, by state troops and militia. So 
is right here. The every year of what's going on. Campaigns. And then last but not least, the fall of the Confederacy. But uh other than that, there's really not much else. Um, but as I said, uh, if y'all want to see more of this kind of stuff, just let me know in the comments. Hit like and subscribe. If you want to see more history on the Civil War, just uh, let me know. Here's uh, some more up on the whole German U-boat thing I was uh, telling you guys about. Says right here that they were received 155 millimeter guns, and this did well, and it happened on July 30th. Uh, where it says there was a freighter called the Robert E. Lee killing 25 people out of uh, 407. Uh, after that, the can the uh, uh, troops in the area uh, basically put in death death charges to make sure there were no more German U-boat ratings. You can see the back of one of the bunkers. There's another one over there. Not much remains of much of the Moon Pass battlefield, just because uh, most of it uh, that it used to look like during and after the fight no longer exists because I said the constant hurricanes and much more. But, uh, yeah, that's it, uh, guys. Um, so I, I wanted to ask you guys something. Uh, I'm planning to do games. Uh, something that y'all, that could be more interesting. I wanted to ask, put y'all in this suggestion. What would you, what are the two games you see more? Ultimate General, Civil War, or Grand Tactician, the Civil War? Let, put that down in the comments on 